one Titan, very bad news. But two Titans, things are about to get really weird. In Battle for Zendikar, almost all of the Eldrazi we saw were related to Ulamog. Uh, the Eldrazi Titan who focuses most on consumption, hunger, just, just the devouring of matter. Well, in Oath of the Gatewatch, we get Kozilek. Kozilek is a little bit different. Kozilek is the Great Distortion. Where, Ko where Kozilek goes, reality distorts. The things you, you kind of, you take for granted, that gravity will work. Those things kind of, those things go sideways. Uh, perception gets altered. People you thought were your friends look like your enemies. Just everything that you kind of thought were these foundational, solid elements of reality just fall to pieces. Kozilek is completely and utterly warping reality. Everything is not what it seems. He can mutate the laws of physics. Gravity doesn't work the same. You can be pulled up apart off the ground and don't know where your next step is going to be. You can, um, your head can be on one side of like the battlefield and your legs on the other side of the battlefield and you don't know how that happened and you're probably not gonna last too long that way. Okay, so we started Oath of the Gatewatch, and what we knew was we'd introduced Ulamog in Battle for Zendikar, and what we knew was it was time to introduce Kosalek. You see, he's buried underground, he wasn't actually gone. Um, and so th the beginning of the design was all about how do we bring Kosalek to life. Maybe you're playing a ramp deck, and you've just emptied your hand playing your, your last land that you need to cast Kosalek, and now you can kind of scoop back up a full grip of seven cards we thought was pretty awesome, and it also kept it playing in the same space as the original Kozilek, but not obviously stronger or weaker. When we were designing the, uh, the Kozilek mechanic, the mechanic for Kozilek's brood lineage, we threw lots and lots of ideas up on the whiteboard, uh, and none of them really felt like they were big enough to fill a whole mechanic. You know, we couldn't, we couldn't make six commons with each of these mechanics. They just seemed like a card or maybe two cards, and so, we took all of those things and we collected them together and we said, okay, these are special abilities that belong to Kozilek here and you can only get them if you spend colorless mana. So you need mana generated by a soul ring or a mind stone or a wastes, which is our new basic land that generates colorless mana uh, in order to use these abilities. So if you notice in a mana cost, when you see like a one in a circle, that means you can use any mana you want. It could be colored mana, colorless mana, we don't care. It could be any mana you want. When you see one in a rules text box after the colon, that means I'm adding one colorless mana to your mana pool. So in one case, it means one of any color. It's generic mana. In the other case, it means one colorless mana. It's colorless. Those aren't the same thing, but we've always represented them as being the same thing. But we now made spells in which we had mana costs that had a one with a circle that meant colorless. It didn't mean any color. So, oh, okay, we can't do that. We can't have one thing mean two things in the same place. So we realized we needed to make a brand new mana symbol. Okay, so there's a new mana symbol in Oath of the Gatewatch. It kind of looks like a curved diamond. It's the colorless mana symbol. Call it C mana for short, what have you. Now, it's not really a new thing. You've been adding colorless mana to your mana pool for years. We're just kind of changing the system up a little bit. Now, if you see a numeric symbol, like a one, a two, a three, or an X, that's a cost. That's something you have to pay. And you can pay it with any kind of mana, white mana, blue mana, colorless mana, doesn't matter. If you see the colorless mana symbol, that represents not only the colorless mana that you add to your pool, but also a cost that you can pay only with colorless mana. So it's kind of a new thing for Oath of the Gatewatches, those costs. So one of the things that we've been trying to do forever is a basic land that is colorless. Now there's two different reasons why people want it. One is the, the Barry's land reason, which is the idea of taking something like domain and getting it to six. Um, the other reason people want it is for commander, that if you want to play a colorless commander, it is really, really hard because you don't have any basic land that you're allowed to put in your deck. Um, we weren't able to solve the first one. Uh, Rules-wise, it's just too difficult. So your domain doesn't get to go to six. But we were finally to, we able, we were able to solve the second one. And so waste finally, there's another basic land. Commander players, you're welcome. And I think it'll add a, a little something new to the game. When design told us that that, that was the plan, that they needed this wastes card, uh, we came back at them and said, 
I think we need two. Um, we don't do a lot of art variations anymore. We haven't done that in a long time, but in this set you will see that there are two pieces of art, four wastes, uh, one that has the chalky, spongy bone dust of Ulamog's uh, corruption pattern after after he's been feeding, and the other that has the square spiral oil sheen bismuth whatever of Kozilek's corruption pattern after he's been through an area. One of the cool things we got to do in Oath of the Gate Watch in terms of the art and kind of showing the presence of Kozilek as, as he emerged on the scene was that his lineage always showed up underground in Battle for Zendikar. If you look at uh, Herald of Kozilek or Kozilek's Channeler, they're always underground. And you know, in Oath of the Gate Watch, you, you see them out in the open and just really loudly says, Kozilek is here. So Design handed the file over to development and we asked them, what is Kozilek all about? And we were told, he's weird? and kind of had to go from there. So what we had were these little pockets of different kind of cards with strange abilities, all united under this colorless mana mechanic. And so you'll see in causeless influence as opposed to Ulamog from the last set, there's quite a bit of odd stuff happening in the set in little pockets. You'll see little tiny themes spring up in your limited decks or your constructed decks that work together in ways you won't even expect. Inverter of Truths is a really interesting mythic. Like, on the surface, seems like you're getting a 6-6 six, six flyer for 4 mana, but with a serious drawback of exiling your whole library. But in a lot of situations, that can be an upside. If your graveyard is stocked full of goodies, you kind of want to draw cards from your graveyard rather than your library. We did a few cards like Bearer of Silence. Now this is a card that you cast, and when you cast it, you get the additional ability to pay a little bit more mana to get an additional effect. Now this is a little different than how we've done things in the past. This isn't a part of the spell, this is just a free trigger that you get that's pretty much unstoppable. It's to help show that Eldrazi are a little more difficult to deal with than your average creature. The Mattery Shaper is an example of a Kozilek card that sort of bends or defies what laws of physics may be. So it starts as a 3-2, but when it dies it actually will change into something else. It's part of the Eldrazi being inscrutable, is you don't actually know what or what should happen when Eldrazi are involved. So now you're drafting Oath of the Gatewatch, Oath of the Gatewatch, Battle for Zendikar. But we haven't forgotten about all those cards in your Battle for Zendikar pack, and even though there are no cards with the actual ingest mechanic in Oath of the Gatewatch, we still wanted to support that strategy, so by the time you get around to your Battle for Zendikar pack, some cards could be exiled. You might have some cards that can exile your opponent's cards. And that's where a card like Mind Melter comes in. It doesn't have ingest, but it's still exiling cards from your opponent's hand. So it, you can draft those processors that nobody else wants and really take advantage of them. So I, I enjoy all of the Eldrazi that cost colorless mana in their mana cost. I think it was a really fun development process fleshing out what does a colorless mana deck look like. And of course, when we're introducing something outside of the five colors, um, that really asks you to go out of your way to build around it. We wanted to make sure that the tools were there to build a robust deck. So we provided a bunch of different options at each different mana cost. You can kind of see there's like a almost a two, three, four, five curve with the uh, colorless Eldrazi that are there. And that's not by accident. We wanted to provide those tools because we knew, um, you know, this was this was the the first set where we're doing this, and we wanted you know colorless cards to be able to compete with the colored cards um, that you have many many more of in standard. Once we decided that C mana would be in the set, one of development's big goals was to make sure that you could build a standard deck with the C mana and it would be fun and powerful. So we made a lot of cards uh, in colors, so devoid cards, that had the C mana kickers. For example, uh, Eldrazi Obligator and Bear of Silence are two of the more powerful cards that help you get both a color and sea mana into your deck. Uh, and then there's also the, the pure sea mana card, like Reality Smasher. Uh, that was, that's one of the more powerful rewards. That's a, just a huge play I five mana for, the colors don't really get, you have to really go to this colorless mana to get a card that functions like Reality Smasher. So my hope for Oath of the Gate Watch, like my best case scenario, I'm hoping it's playing out even as you watch this video, is that the new colorless mana cards have a big splash in standard constructed that all of a sudden they allow people to make a new type of deck that they've never made before and that it will be successful 
on the biggest stage where magic is played.